Good afternoon and welcome to Fortress Press Live, where we connect you with the people and passions behind the books we publish here at Fortress Press. Our guest today is Neil Elliott, and we'll be talking about his work as a senior acquisitions editor for Fortress Press. Neil, welcome to Fortress Press Live. Thank you. I'm glad to be with you and your listeners. Neil, why don't you take a few moments and introduce yourself to the Fortress Press Live audience? Glad to. I am, uh, at this point, a veteran of 24 Minnesota winters. I have come to Minnesota after detours to either coast for college and for graduate school and have been here about 24 years. I think I, if I could quote Augustine badly, I've come to love publishing late in my career. My earlier career began in academic life as a scholar and professor of New Testament. And then I was ordained as an Episcopal priest and had a brief beginning of a career as a university chaplain before coming here to Fortress Press. Throughout that time, I've had Fortress books on my shelves. They've just been reliable resources and always something I respected highly. So it's a great honor for me as well as a pleasure to be working at Fortress. Now, you work on the Fortress Press team as a senior acquisitions editor. Tell us a bit about your role and what are some of the things that really give you a drive and passion for the things you do each day here at Fortress Press? Sure. As acquiring editor, that's a rather specific title, but I wear a number of different hats. I do a number of different tasks. I've been a content or product developer with something like the online New Proclamation site. That was a preaching resource begun eight years ago, I think. I was involved with Scott Tunsett, our reference editor, with the People's Bible and the People's Companion, which I thought were very innovative products. And the Paul and Critical Context series, I helped to develop that. The Sounding series, most recently the Fortress Commentary, which is, for me, a very exciting project. And we can talk about that more if, if you'd like. I've been a liaison to the Hermeneia board, the Hermeneia Commentary series, and enjoyed that work very much, getting to know those scholars. I've worked, though it's not a, a formal part of my job description, as a sort of an analyst about uh, what's coming up in New Testament studies, biblical studies generally, what the field of theological education looks like, what's going on in terms of adoptions, how people teach. And my own classroom experience has made me particularly interested in what kinds of resources are useful for teaching religion and teaching biblical studies. And I I also, the direct acquiring part of the job is simply reading new submissions and setting books that are really promising on their way. When I first started here, more of my work was really to, you might say, more like a helicopter parent. I was guiding books all the way through the production process with the help of my other colleagues here. Now that we have streamlined a lot of our processes, my job is much more at the beginning of the process. I look over proposals, I commission projects, and when the manuscripts come in, that's sort of the the point where I get them dressed up and ready to go and then send them off. And that's sort of goodbye at that point, like putting kids on the bus for camp or launching new careers. Now, when it comes to new projects, uh, talk to us about some of the things that you look for when you're considering a proposal or an idea. Sure. I think the most important thing I'm looking for is that the book is not too idiosyncratic, not too self-indulgent. I'd like to see that an author is current with the field, that they can describe clearly and represent accurately what we know or think we know in biblical studies, and to make sense of that field in terms of contemporary significance. I want to see that they represent author authors fairly, and especially that they're advancing the question. They're not just sort of rehearsing what other people have done, but they're really showing us a new light on their topic. Clear writing is really important. I need to be able to not only follow the author's argument, but know that a fairly wide readership will be able to follow this and be compelled by it. And I want to make sure that a book matters, that our publishing this will mean that real value is given to the wider academic and the ecclesiastical communities. Now, I know you have many books that come across your desk on a regular basis, but if you could only pick a handful, what are some of the recent projects that really got you excited that were maybe highlights of the past year? Sure. I think foremost is the most recent book that's landed on our desks, the two-volume set, the Fortress Commentary on the Bible. That's a new endeavor for us. We have, for years, been the publishers of the Hermeneia series and the Continental Commentary series, but we have avoided individual commentary volumes. 
This was a, a sort of a challenge to us to come up with a single one volume Bible commentary, which quickly grew in our planning into two volumes, Old and New Testaments. What's new and distinctive about these volumes is that they're built on a sort of a three level structure, where the first level is interpreting the Bible, the biblical text in its ancient context. That's the focus of most commentaries to get at the historical, the literary context, social realities in the, in the ancient world. The second level is the interpretive tradition, so what some scholars would call reception history, describing how the text has been read and how it, uh, how it has meant different things over time, with a real emphasis that that history, that interval between the composition of the text and how we read it today, shapes the way we read it today. And then the third level is focused on questions of contemporary significance, what this text means to people, how it's being read, how it's being heard, what questions people are raising about it, what challenges they're raising to it. We've just had that land on our desks, and I'm I'm very excited about that project. I'm also, although I've not been involved with these projects, I'm interested in the Elements series, which are books on pedagogy that are being developed here at Fortress Press. I'm eager to get a hold of those myself and hope that they make a real difference in the Guild. There are any number of other projects that we could talk about at any length you'd like that are exciting to me. I'm really intrigued by books that give us a new perspective on older established topics. So a new book coming out on Paul and Judaism, a book on the parables, a couple of books on the parables, actually, a new book on the Lord's Prayer that all set these in new contexts and show us new angles of vision. Well, and another project or set of projects that we've been talking about a lot lately on our website and online are a number of our textbooks that are now available in Inkling editions. Talk to us a bit about your thoughts on those. Those are a real new move for Fortress Press, and I think a very exciting one. The Inkling platform allows us to present electronic textbooks, but not just a sort of EPUB file like you would find on uh, Nook or Kindle. Uh, These are interactive textbooks, which means a student using this electronic text is reading it on screen following links that allow them to take quizzes along the way to review material, and depending on the answer they give, the textbook itself may direct them back to a paragraph and say, look at that again, make sure you understand it. It's a wonderful way, I think, for not just for a student to get into additional material. There are images, maps, primary sources that can't be easily packed into a print textbook. The Inkling textbook is not just a sort of an HTML file that lets you read through electronic text as you would on Nook or or Kindle. It's an interactive product, an interactive environment, you might say, that allows the student to immediately go out to look at images, maps, primary sources in translation that can't be easily packed into a print textbook but are suddenly available electronically. For the professor, what that means is that a lot of what you might call the rehearsal work that often goes on in a classroom, making sure that the students actually read the material, that they understood the material, that there are no substantial misapprehensions that would keep students from making progress. A lot of that work is done with the student's interaction with the textbook itself, which means the professor's time then with the students is freed up, either in the classroom or in an online course environment, to go in directions the professor wants to go, to ask interpretive questions, synthesis questions, to ask students, what does this mean to you? What does this mean for us in the contemporary world? And so on. Well, folks, it's time to bring this episode of Fortress Press Live to a close. If you'd like to find out more about the books mentioned in today's episode, you can check out the show notes for this episode, which are available at fplive.fortresspress.com forward slash 014. And Neil, thanks for giving us a window into your world here as a senior acquisitions editor, and thanks for being a part of this episode of Fortress Press Live. My pleasure. Thanks for being a part of my conversation today with Neil Elliott. To view the show notes for this episode or to leave a comment, head over to fplive.fortresspress.com forward slash 014. While you're there, be sure to check out other episodes of Fortress Press Live and subscribe to the show via Stitcher Radio. Until next time, this is your host, Sean Tabbitt, signing off.